Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Drawing with Michael. This morning I have, of course, a full day of work, as I typically do. Um, this morning I'm just doing a warm-up. You guys get to see and peek in on my daily process. I know I've been doing a lot of faces lately, so I'm going to do something maybe a little bit different this morning. Today I'm starting out with a color erase pencil on Bristol board. I will be segueing at some point in time to colored paper. We're gonna be using colored paper, not today, but definitely in the very near future. Um, so, you guys, for those of you who follow my channel know that uh, I recently bought a DSLR camera <clears throat> used um, but still new to me. It had a very low shutter count um, and I basically bought it so I would have uh, a new camera for doing videos and a new camera for doing photographs because I, I teach photography so I wanted to have a decent uh, photo uh, camera. I already had a decent camera. I had a another DSLR that, that uh, is made by Nikon, but it didn't shoot uh, HD video or anything like that. So I went ahead and went out and purchased one, and it's been fantastic. Um, the only little issue I've had with it is, you know, whenever I'm videotaping, I have a 20 minute window. I'm sure there's an adjustment in there, but at the end of the day, with my Canon, the one that you guys are currently looking at, there is not a, uh, there's not a uh, video time limit. Uh, it basically does the 20 minute block and it automatically goes and it starts recording again. Anyway, I digress, I, I apologize. I'm trying to get things going here for this particular drawing. <clears throat> this morning we're just doing a really simple dragon. Um, kind of combined with a, uh, maybe an alligator? Don't really know. I'm just having some fun this morning doing, you know, doing a creature. I love doing creatures. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, you know, I, I just, I love drawing and creatures really give me the opportunity to kind of flex my creative muscle per se. And that's what I'm doing this morning. Um, not much to say other than that. I, I've been working a lot lately. So, whenever you do characters uh, in general, you know, there's obviously a lot of avenues that you can go with characters, but what I like to do is I like to break characters down into simple shapes. Here's a video I did yesterday, <clears throat> into simple shapes. So for this particular drawing, what I did was I'm breaking it down because I wanted him to have a very large head mass. And then I come back and I have that line of action here. And then I did, I did like a, a constructive beam, a construction beam. So, Breaking it down into its most simple rudimentary shapes really helps me, you know, bring things down. So basically what I have is I have this nice beam shape here that, com that comprises his body. And I've drawn my 3D construction lines and I have a circle. And then I have a, another beam basically that comes up and around that's going to make his face. Okay. If that makes things a little bit easier for you guys. Trust me, I know drawing is not easy. I get it. I'm, I'm, whenever you teach, you have to break things down in such a way that isn't so complex. And whenever you do that, a lot of times you lose, I think, some of the, uh, you know, things that really are important. So you really have to think um, in terms of how am I going to explain this in such a way that, you know, the person who doesn't understand, they can relate to it. And that's, you know, that's ultimately at the end of the day, that's what makes a really good teacher. A teacher is extremely valuable, you know, because obviously they, they teach concepts, but all they do is give you a spark, right? A spark, a spark that helps you kind of see things in a different way and, you know, if you have that teacher that can really bring that spark to life, then you've you've definitely found something that's worth its weight in gold. 
You know, I've had a couple teachers in my life that have really sewn into my life and given me so much more than what I ever understood at that particular point in time. And a lot of times, you know, you have that one teacher that will bump you a little bit, you know, just, just a little bit um, in the beginning to kind of give you a different perspective uh, and really show you, uh, show you a different way to look at life. So, as I concentrate here and try and concentrate and talk at the same time, my apologies for that. Might even try to do some ink on this one today. I've got an extra, got an extra 20 minutes, so hopefully I'll be able to throw some ink on here for you guys. <laughs> Maybe he's a rock, like a rock star. He's got some fur that comes up. I was gonna originally do these scale bones. Instead of that, let's give him a, there we go. Okay, again. You know, I talked about drawing things in three-quarter, center view, profile, you know, top view, all those things that as a, as a toy designer that I do all the time because I have to do um, turnarounds. A turnaround is basically a view of an, of, a, of an item that I've designed from a front, a side, a bottom, a top, um, you know, profile uh, and back views for the people that will be creating it if I'm not creating it uh, in ZBrush. Um, I've had the opportunity this week to do some 3D sculpting again. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be a novice. I've been using the program for quite a while and I've done quite a few professional projects. But what I don't want to ever do is just look at something, especially a, a very robust program like ZBrush that can do so many different things and think that I have, you know, reached the pinnacle. It's like Photoshop. There's so many different ways to do so many different things in Photoshop. It, it really should uh, behoove you to keep that learning mindset, um, you know, especially a program like ZBrush. Gosh, it's, it's like I said, it's so rich. <laughs> um, but I, I've been doing a lot of sculpting in ZBrush, and this week I've had the opportunity to add a very complex job to, yeah, I, I, I'm not scared. I think that uh, at the end of the day, you know, I've already done quite a few uh, major projects in ZBrush. And like I said, I am a professional artist and I do things on a professional level. And that's not the issue. It's just whenever you get a project that is outside of your comfort zone, you really have to think about how you're going to accomplish the task at hand. And, and of course, you know, I like leaning on the others uh, in the world that have been doing this either a lot longer or they've been doing it better, which there's quite a few of them out there. I would never presume that I'm the best at anything. Um, but you definitely want to look at what other people are doing in terms of, uh, you know, maybe on YouTube, but in terms of um, how they might be able to solve the artistic equation. Um, yeah, so this drawing right here is just something fun, right? We're just having fun today. I'll be doing a demo today in class, and I, I don't quite know what I'm doing yet um, because it's a compositing demo in Photoshop. Uh, a lot of the kids that I teach are novices at not only creating artwork, but also being in the uh, wonderful world of Photoshop. And as we all know, um, learning something new takes time. So what I decided to do is go ahead and, and help them out a little bit, give them some tips and tricks as far as, you know, how to do certain things uh, in Photoshop. All right, so if you look, I've got my base down of exactly what I'm going to, you know, Something simple, you know, just really simple composition. Something fun, right? I haven't decided quite what I'm going to have to do yet. That's kind of what I do. Okay, so like right now, I've got my base in, I've got my head and I've got my gesture. Now I'm starting to think about, um, I'm still not into the details. I'm still thinking weight. So I, I noticed I drew his belly a little bit too far in. 
So I notice his head's kind of tilted just slightly back and he's resting on his rear haunches. I want his belly to be just a little bit bigger over here. So what that'll do is it'll help balance this large shape right here. See, I have that line here, that rhythm and flow we talked about over the past couple days, right? If you visit my channel, you know that I'm, I do little warm-up videos. Look at that finger that comes around here because it wraps around. Remember we talked about form. So here we go. Here's that. I got that leg that comes here. Oop, I don't want to do that. That's a mistake. Mistake. Okay. So now we come back and we start. I'm going to draw this shoulder in because this shoulder over here is hidden by his body mass. So this shoulder comes down. Right? And then I have this other mass that comes up and it wraps around because that muscle here. And then I have this here. It comes around. And here's the back of him. It comes like this. I've got these skin folds here and here. All right. Now, if you looked, I went ahead and I drew this shape in, and then I drew this other shape on top of it. That layering of the of the line work and the forms helps me get a better understanding in terms of the of the way things are. You know, I'm not drawing it from a profile, so you're not seeing the bone. Well, you're not seeing the arm in its natural state. You're showing it at a perspective, so you have to realize that there's a bone in here. It comes here. You're not going to see it, of course, because it's inside the arm. And then it comes towards you, and it's foreshortened. So this arm is foreshortened. So you have to always remember that... Here, maybe we'll have him hold something. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking and drawing at the same time. My apologies for that. Okay, so maybe he's got a... He's got a... There you go. He's got his cell phone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> got that other one that comes up. I don't want to mess around with the silhouette. I like the silhouette a lot. But then again, I don't want to have that line come down and go automatically into there because it'll look like a body mass. So I'm coming to kind of have this come up and right into here. Right? So I have these two opposing angle, I'm sorry, lines that go different directions. And this comes up, and it goes behind the phone, and there. <clears throat> so here, got this, it comes like this, and this that wraps around. Okay, so now I start thinking about, he's got this glottal area that comes here, and now I've got to do his feet. I'm not going to go too detailed here. Okay, here. <clears throat> here. All right. And of course, every good dragon has to have some type of wing element, right? Like I said before, I do toys, and there is a myriad of things that, golly, I mean, whenever you do toys, whenever you do anything for sale in the retail market, especially if there's licenses involved, there's so many variables whenever it comes to doing license work. Let's have the other wing come up like this, and I have it. I don't want to mess up that silhouette. So even though this other wing was probably, it's probably over here, I won't see it. I do want to have that come around here 
and I'll foreshorten it just a little bit. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I'm not sure if this is going to work, so I'm just trying to... Eh, I think it works. It's fine. And I'm seeing the inside of the wing, and I might even have that other right here come around. And I have that like this, and it goes out. Okay, <clears throat> so let's do the tail. And that body mass comes around. Here's the tail. Okay, I have a couple little doodads here. Where are we at? Huh. Must not have deleted the other video on there. It says I only have 13 minutes. That is unacceptable. Actually, 24 minutes. We're fine. Okay. So here, I've got his feet with his little claw doodads coming out. This one's kind of foreshortened just a little bit towards me. Okay. Then this leg basically starts all the way over here. And it's got his knee. I wanted to show that knee just a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then I have this foot, which kind of comes towards you. So it's kind of down a little bit. Not much. It's, it's on the same plane, but you just need to remember you know, something three-quarter, even though the legs are, are level, whenever it turns away from you, you see how it turns away from you? Like if it's like this, and then it goes like that, this object's going to be down just a little bit. So it needs to be down just a little bit. Okay, and we have that claw coming forward, up and around, and then we have it here. Nice. Okay, and then it kind of slopes slightly out. Okay, I've drawn a lot of dragons in my day. Gosh, there, there isn't, I don't want to say there's no rules. There ain't no rules. There are, but whenever it comes to mythical creatures, I think we can bend the rules a little bit, <laughs> right? Besides, this one's kind of like, okay, so right now, I'm looking at this, I want to give a little bit more detail in here, and I, and I see this shape right here, and it comes up, and then I want this to come out, because, you know, his face, it's in terms of uh, just the way it's constructed, this comes here, and it comes out, down, over, and I'm drawing these to let you guys see what I'm feeling. You see how that is in, it goes out just a little bit, and then it goes under, like this, and then it comes out again, because you have that bone part of the lip, you know, you have that underlying structure. Um, even though it is a mythical creature, there, there's just, you know, I wanna make sure and have some type of reference to the real world. <laughs> okay, so maybe his arm, maybe he's got a, there we go. So we got a little bit of things coming here. And his leg. He's got some bump a -doos. Okay. Here, here. A couple spots. And a lot of times they have these scale, or not scales, but the underlying belly. If you ever look at the belly of a, like a crocodile or something. But I'm not going to go in and draw these lines. I like the way it looks right now. Okay, here, 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 here. Okay. Okay. Get my handy dandy Kohinoor red. Oh, that's crap. I don't want that. Well, that is not crap. It still works. This one right here. So I'm going to give a little bit of shading. Not much. Because I'm going to come back here in just a second with my ink. I'll probably put you guys on time lapse for the ink because the ink's going to take a little while. About 10 minutes. I don't think you guys want to watch me do that. So, 
here is the pen I'm using. It's the Pigma. You guys know that I like Pigma pen. Or pen. I also have these great um, uh, pens from, uh, I don't want to say Asia because Asia, you know, includes, you know, not only China, but parts of Russia and Japan. But this obviously has some type of um, either Japanese or Chinese writing, but this is a Sakura brush pen. So I love these because, I mean, first of all, it's it's got a very nice quality to it. The ink's fantastic. But I like this pen as well because it's got a little bit bigger, uh, broader of a tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and I'm going to just start really, even though I want to have a nice stroke here, I do, since it is scaly, what I'm doing is basically putting in some of the bumps, but I'm not overdoing it. I don't want to overdo it and go in and draw every bump. A lot of times, just a little bit is enough, right? Because I'm going to come back with color on this one. Like I said, and I, I got an extra 20 minutes today. So you see how that gives, even though, yeah, see, we're just going to give a little bit here and there, here and there, a little bit darker on the bottom. You know, variation of line weight here. So that's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so then we come here. Maybe he's got some bumps coming out. And he's got some scales. You know, we'll do the eye like this. I'm not doing the lid. Here's this. Okay. Whenever I go in and draw the, uh, you know, do the highlights, I'll do a highlight uh, on his face. So I'm going to have this come up just slightly, goes over the eye just a little bit, and I got these bumps, and maybe there's his lid. You know, maybe I'll do the lid all the way up here, and you just see a little bit of it, and you see this like that. There we go. So I, I didn't want to do that with a pencil because a lot of times whenever I get done with the pencil work, you know, I want to get in there and here's the earbud right here. So the earbud goes in and comes around. There we go. A lot of times it's, you know, just like Bob Ross says, it's that happy accident that really gives the piece that extra oomph. So... I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on time lapse and you can enjoy the inking process. Thank you guys and I'll do a wrap up at the end. So enjoy the process.
thank you guys for visiting the channel. I really appreciate it. Hit that like and subscribe button, share, and we'll definitely see you soon. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you.